Head to toe assessment, take eight. First, I would verify the order. I would make sure that my patient, what they needed, uh, was the head to toe assessment. Then I would gather my supplies, which my supplies are here. The hammer, which will represent the reflex hammer. Yeah, that's all it is for, it's just a representation so I know. My cotton ball, my fragrance, my time depressor, my pen light, my gloves, and my stethoscope. Next, I would perform hand hygiene, where I put the Purell or, or wash my hands, and then I would don my gloves. I would come in, I would pull the curtain, I would provide privacy for the patient, and I would, and I would perform aid it, <clears throat> which is introducing myself. Hi, my name is Joshua. I'll be your student nurse for today. I'm here to perform a head to toe assessment on you. It'll take about 15 to 20 minutes. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next, I would get two patient identifiers. Can you give me your name and date of birth, please? I'm Elijah Robles and I was born December 6, 2005. Thank you. <clears throat> I would. I would gather that or I'd bounce that information off of the wristband that he would be wearing. Next, I would assess the cop, which is what I call the cop. It would be the consciousness, orientation, and pain. Are you in any pain today? Then I would, while I'm doing that, I would take note of his hygiene, his position, his posture, uh, any medical aids and equipment that he may have. Next, I would do the integumentary system, which I would start off by inspecting the scalp for <clears throat> hair color, hair distribution, any lesions or infestations. I would pinch for skin turgor. I would note any, as I'm assessing, any, any lesions or wounds. I would... Uh, palpate to assess for what I call TMT, which is temperature at the back of the hand, a moisture, and texture. Then I, next I would I would examine the shin lay and shins for hair distribution. I would check the both the sets of toes and fingers for any clubbing and um, blanching. I would also check the ankles for edema and then I would move on to the musculoskeletal system which I could have you stand up. I would perform what are you doing? I would perform my <laughs> I would perform poop, what I call poop, which is perform the Romberg test and observe or have you close your eyes and have the patient close his eyes for 30 seconds. I'm not gonna have you do that, you're good. Um, then I would have him walk. I observe his, his gait and his balance by having him walk on his uh, Regular walk, a normal walk, his head to toe, or sorry, heel to toe. I'd have him walk on his toes and I'd have him walk on his heels. After that, I would observe and palpate his spine. Can I get bend over and touch your toes, please? And I'd be checking the spine for normal curvature. Muscle strength. I would test for muscle strength by having you resist. Which one? Can I get your hands? Resist. I would do the same thing bilaterally with the legs. Uh, I would also check for range of motion. Can you stick your arms out? Can you put them behind your head? Can you can you put spin them in a circular motion? 
Again, you stick out your leg, the other leg, and you spin it. You spin the other leg. And then next I would do abdomen, which I'm just gonna have him stand while I do the abdomen. I would first note it from the contour from two different two different um, angles. So I'm gonna the contour from two different angles. Then I would also take the no. No, I would note symmetry, any, any hair distribution, any scars, any lesions, um, the umbilicus. Then I'll also take for bowel sounds and I'll also take for um, abdominal aortic. Then I would check for a hernia around the umbilicus area. Then I would palpate the lower quadrants. And I would be checking for any abnormalities. And I would do the same thing in the back. Oh, um, during the palpate, palpation, I'd be checking for rebound and tenderness. And you do that by knocking you do this in the back as well for the for the kidneys <clears throat> uh, next would be pico which are you in any any pain when you have when you urinate you have any incontinence? That means control of your bladder. Wait, what? You have control of your bladder. Yes. Uh, what color is your urine? I don't know. Is it white? Okay, clear. Yes. Um, is, there, is there any odors in your urine? Does it smell? I don't know. Sometimes, I guess. Okay. After Pico would be the neurological. I would assess his mood and affect. I would um, check for check his memory. Do you remember what? school you went to in Highland? Highland Middle School. Okay, thank you. And then I would assess the 12 cranial nerves. Mm. 
Actually, before I do the 12 cranial nerves, I would I would check for upper and lower limb or upper upper and lower extremity coordination. So can you can you do this on your thighs? Can you run your heel up your shins? Do the other one. Okay, thank you. And then I would assess the the 12 cranial nerves, which would start with the olfactory, which would be the smell, the fragrance. Oh, no, it's not open. So, what do you smell? It's supposed to be orange. It smells of wood to me. Gotcha. It smells like uh, a Second would be the optic. Which I would, or yeah, the optic would be the smelling. So if I could have you cover one eye, and you, this is where you would read the sign with the big E on it at the do eye doctor's office. Okay, you're good. After that would be the ocular motor, where I would test, I would check for the eyelids for blinking and uh, the pupils. Um, after the ocular. Or the ocular motor is trochlear, and that is I would have look to see if the down and in. So I'd have you look at this pin. Now look at the wall behind you. So look at the pin, and then look at the wall behind you. The wall behind you. All right. After that would be the trigeminal which would be the facial, the cotton ball to the face. Can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel it in all four spaces, all four times I touched you? <clears throat> that was the trigeminal abducens, which is the cat whiskers. Can you follow my pen? Reduce your eyes. Okay, thank you. Next would be the facial. Can you smile? Can you frown? <laughs> Can you puff out your cheeks? Okay, after the facial would be the Glossopharyngeal. I'm not sure how to say that. Oh, I forgot how to say that. Anyways, let me. Oh, gag reflex. This is where I would. We'll check his gag reflex, open up, say ah, kind of push this in there just enough. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to do it. But uh, after that one would be the acoustic, which the acoustic would be, can you repeat after me when I whisper? A, B, C. And I would do that bilaterally. After the acoustic would be the vagus, and the vagus is the swallowing. Can you swallow? Okay. After the vagus comes The accessory, the accessory nerve, which would be the neck. Can you look up, look down, to the left, to the right? All right.
after the accessory comes the hypo hypoglossal. Oh, can you stick out your tongue? All right, now can you repeat after me? Light, tight, rainbow bright. Light, I mean dynamite. Light, tight, dynamite. Thank you. I had to throw that in because rainbow bright is in my Try to remember it. Okay, um, I said I wasn't going to use this, but I'm going to use this now. Next would be the, if I touch with this side, I want you to tell me sharp. And if I touch with this side, I want you to tell me dull. So close, why don't you sit down, close your eyes, and I'm going to touch you with one of these two sides. You just tell me what you feel. Sharp. Sharp. Dull. That bilaterally. Next would be um, I'm brain farting here. Um, duh, reflexes. I would check for reflexes here by striking the fingers, the bicep, the tricep, the patellar, and then the plant, the, the plantar, which would be the backwards J. And I'd do that bilaterally.